Do you know what these are? If you do, let me know in the comments. Let's see how many people recognize them and remember what they are. Smart home automation, it's been around for many, many years, but not until fairly recently did it gain a mainstream interest. And because of this, an enormous growth and investment from the tech community. Today, I wanna to talk to you about the heart of your smart home, sensors and the devices, all the things that actually add the smarts to your home. Motion, presence, contact, and other smart home sensors are what make systems like Home Assistant, Apple HomeKit, OpenHab, and even Samsung's smart things actually able to do things. Without them, our smart light bulbs and music would be just as um, unsmart as before. And if you think about it, even more complicated since we always need to open that app just to control them, rather than have the buttons and knobs on the old school devices. So let's take a look at some of my most used smart home devices and how we can use them with Home Assistant. And before you ask, I'm gonna put all the links down below in the description, and yes, there are affiliate links. Clicking helps out my channel, but it doesn't change your cost a thing. You guys all know how this works. Now, they are all an important part of my smart home, but I'm gonna save my favorite for last, so make sure you stick around. And this seems like a good time to remind you to subscribe and to click the bell so you're notified when I create new content. I'm gonna start with probably the most common device that I use, motion sensors. I have these installed all over my house, and as you would expect, in the most simplest form, they do just as advertised. They detect motion. Now, some of these actually have multiple sensors. So on top of motion, they can report temperature, humidity, light levels, UV levels, and more. Some of them are battery operated, and some can be plugged in. There are many, many different versions. But be aware, you can find cheap ones, and you can find modestly priced ones. Often, you're gonna get what you pay for in terms of reliability. Now, I would say around 50 to 80 bucks is a good average price, depending on the number of sensors that that device includes. So my favorite, it's the AOTech Multi Sensors. Now, depending on the model, this device has up to seven sensors built in. It comes in a small form factor, that has the option to run on batteries or to be plugged in. It's a Z-Wave device, which means you're gonna need a Z-Wave receiver. And if you don't have one, I use a simple USB dongle that works really well. It provides Z-Wave and Zigbee. These are two popular protocols for smart home devices. I put the link down below to the one I use. Why is motion so important? Motion's the easiest way to trigger an automation. Most commonly, I use this to turn on lights, and also I turn off the lights once a specific amount of time has passed without any motion. Now, in most cases, this works great but sometimes it can fail if you're still in a room, but you're not moving around. Uh, for example, you can use the motion to turn on the lights, but if you end up sitting fairly still at a desk or on the couch, the device is gonna think there's no longer motion and you may find the lights turn off. This is when you end up looking ridiculous because you're waving your arms around to trigger the motion detector and try to get the lights to come back on. Now I often solve this by just putting more than one device in a room. You can then create a motion group, meaning any one of these sensors in the group will trigger the automation that turns on the lights. Now don't forget about the additional sensors. You could, for example, use the light sensor in that device to detect the amount of ambient light in a room and automatically turn on the lights as soon as it drops below a specific level. Or you can pair this with motion and make sure the lights only turn on when it's dark in the room. Now next on my list is contact sensors. These are little devices that come in two parts. When you separate them, they report open, and when you bring them back together, they report closed. These are typically battery operated and most often used on door. And just like motion, these can be used to detect the presence of somebody opening a door. I have them on all the main doors in my house, so when I come home, it essentially wakes up my house. And depending on the time of day, I may turn on lights, Say if it's after sunset, I may turn on music and I might adjust the volume depending on the time of the day. Nobody wants to come home to music blaring. Or if it's really late, I just don't turn them on at all. Unlike motion, they don't have extra sensors for temp or other things. I use a mix of Zigbee and Z-Wave devices in my house and I have had success using ones from Ikea, Aotech, and even some of the cheaper ones that you may find. So let's take a quick minute to talk about a huge number of motion and contact sensors, ones you might already have in your home, just like I did. 
So if your home has an alarm system, you might be able to tap into it and bring all of these sensors into Home Assistant without disrupting the alarm system. And actually, you may be able to control it from Home Assistant and create automations that react to different situations, like if the alarm is going off, or when you arm it, or when you disarm the system. Now, systems are all different, but many homes use a common interface, and with a small device, I have the Invisalink, you may be able to quickly connect all of your home alarm system sensors to Home Assistant. The Invisalink link is below. Check it out and see if it works for you. So both of those ones are fairly simple. They're binary. They're yes or no sensors. There's really no smarts built into the device itself. So let's take a look at the final sensor that I've been using and it's the newest one that's available. MM Wave Devices. These are essentially like radar for your home. There are a number of different devices popping up in the market and it's for a good reason. They can detect if a person or even multiple people are in a specific space. So remember that problem with motion. You enter the room, you lie down on the couch to watch TV, and five minutes later, possibly the TV or the lights, they all turn off because of that automation that you created and the now lack of motion. This is a quick way to make your family hate your new automation hobby. So enter the Aquara FP2. With this small device, you can set up zones that are gonna monitor not just for motion, but actual presence in a room. So if you fall asleep on the couch, it still knows you're there and the lights and the TV stay on. So this is the most basic use, but it can actually map out your exact location in the room. You can create different automations based on where you are. For example, back in that living room, you're watching TV. If everyone's on the couch, you can automate it to dim the lights. But if someone stands up, you can detect this with the Aquara and you can create an automation that brings the lighting levels back up so you can get around. When you sit back down, they're going to dim again. And by the way, the FP2 also has an ambient light sensor, so you can tell how bright the room is. If it's the middle of the day, just don't bother turning on the lights. Now to set up the FP2, you're going to need to install their app to configure the zones. After that, you can add it to Home Assistant and you can create your automations there. Now this type of advancement is really what starts to add intelligence to your home. Not only detecting motion, but you can actually start to build automations around what you're doing within that room. If you want to get really creative, add an Apple TV. Home Assistant can detect when you're watching content in the state of your media. Say you pause your movie to talk to someone in the room, well, nothing happens. But if you get up, the FP2 will know that you're walking and it'll also know that the media is paused. So it'll bring up the lights or you could even have it pause the show automatically as you run to the kitchen and then start it back up when you hit the couch again. The sky's the limit and this is why this becomes a hobby as you customize your smart home to do exactly what you want it to do. Hopefully these building blocks are going to get you going or at least they're going to help you plan what devices you want to help build your smart home. The more inputs you have, the smarter you can make your automation. But the nice thing is you can build it one device at a time. Hopefully you found this video useful. Guys, hit the thumbs up and let others know if you did. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if you want to share your experience with these or other devices. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.